Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Hiroshi Ori, president of the conference and a professor of Yokohama University of Pharmacy. First of all, I'd like to apologize for my absence at the conference. The spread of COVID-19 in many countries is now a serious problem all over the world. In Japan, the infection is rapidly increasing. So I don't want to be the, co <coughs> to be the cause of the infection at the conference and in foreign countries. So I decided not to attend the conference. May I start? Uh, let's start my presentation. And I please allow me to give my presentation as a video. The title of my talk is EFDA, a very excellent anti-HIV modified nucleoside from design to the current clinical trial result. EFDA is now under clinical investigation by Mark as MK8591. Last year, Mark named EFDA is not trivial. EFDA is 4 fly ethanol, 2 fluoro, 2 fly deoxyadenosine, 2 positions modified 2 fly deoxyadenosine. This 2 position modification is very important. EFDA is a rather simple molecule. However, I hope you could realize how excellent anti-HIV activity EFDA has. In the beginning of my talk, I would like to propose my general idea for the development of antiviral modified nucleoside based on the mutation of viruses. Mutative viruses adapt themselves to the environmental change by mutation. Mutation causes the drug resistant variant and makes the treatment of viral infectious disease very difficult. Therefore, mutation has been taken for only the cause of the problems in the treatment of viral infectious disease. However, I think that mutation is a heaven sent opportunity for us for the development of antiviral modified nucleoside for the following reasons. Mutation is that viruses change their genes by taking not program incorrect nucleoside into their genes by ignoring watson Creek ATGC pairing. This indicates that the subset selectivity of mutative viral nucleic acid polymerase is not strict. On the other hand, human beings don't mutate and don't accept the incorrect, not programmed nucleoside into their genes. This indicates that the substrate selectivity of human nucleic acid polymerase is very strict. Thus, the substrate selectivity of nucleic acid polymerase is different between mutative viruses and human beings. Therefore, by taking advantage of the difference, it is possible to develop modified nucleosides that are accepted by viral nucleic acid polymerase, namely active to viruses, and not accepted by human nucleic acid polymerase, therefore not toxic to human beings. Thus, we have a chance to develop excellent antiviral modified nucleoside. This is my general idea. <coughs> okay. With respect to HIV, the emergence of drug resistant HIV mutants and the side effects of drugs. Patients must take the drugs in their whole life. These two are the critical problems in the treatment of HIV infection. 
In order to solve these problems, I have proposed the following, following, following four working hypotheses. One is a way to prevent the emergence of drug resistant HIV mutants. Second, the way to decrease the toxicity of nucleoside. Third, number three is the, way the substrate selectivity of RT is different from that of human DNA polymerases. Number four is the way to make nucleoside drugs long acting. Let me explain these hypothesis in detail. The first one, the most important hypothesis is is the way to prevent the emergence of recent HIV mutant. These are the structures of critical nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, all belong to the family of two prime, three prime dioxin nucleoside. This dioxin structure has been assumed essential for the nucleoside to be anti-HIV active, namely that to be the chain terminator of reverse transcriptase. However, recent HIV mutants against all these drugs emerge very easily and very promptly. I thought that recent means that resistant HIV mutants has obtained the ability to discriminate these dioxin nucleoside drugs from physiologic to paradoxical nucleoside and don't accept these drugs into the, uh, the active centers of their reverse transcriptase. The significant difference of the structure between these nucleosides is whether they have three prime hydroxy or not. HIV can discriminate them by this three prime hydroxy. Therefore, the nucleoside, which could prevent the emergence of recent HIV mutants, must prevent the discrimination by HIV. Therefore, must have three prime hydroxy group. In spite of having three prime hydroxy group, the nucleoside must be the chain terminator of reverse transcriptase. The dideoxy nucleoside structure has been assumed essential. So how we can achieve that purpose? I thought the answer would be the introduction of a substituent at four prime position of physiologic two prime deoxy nucleoside. Introduction of a substituent at this position makes this hydroxy group into a very, very unreactive, not reactive neopentyl type secondary alcohol. Therefore, this hydroxy group could be used for the recognition of this nucleoside as two product nucleoside, but could not be used for the elongation of provider DNA chain due to the unreactivity of this hydroxy group. Thus, I have designed four plus substitute two product nucleoside as a nucleoside, which could prevent the emergence of recent HIV mutant. Uh, this is a neopentyl alcohol. This is a primary alcohol. But this hydroxy methyl group is attached to the quaternary carbon due to the strict hindrance of this substituent. Substituent, this hydroxy group is very unreactive, not reactive. Introduction of a substituent at this position makes this carbon quaternary. Then, therefore, this hydroxy is now very, very unreactive, neopentyl type secondary alcohol. However, this structure has a problem. The problem is now this hydroxy group is a neopentyl type primary alcohol, therefore not so reactive. The problem is whether this hydroxy group could be phosphorylated by kinase, kinase or not. Kinase phosphorylation at this position is very important for the nucleoside to be biologically active. We will know the answer. If this nucleoside is a chain terminator and RT reverse transcriptase cannot discriminate this nucleoside and accept this nucleoside, this nucleoside will be highly anti-HIV active. But if human DNA polymerases cannot discriminate this nucleoside and accept this nucleoside, this nucleoside 
should be highly toxic. Next hypothesis the way to decrease the toxicity of nucleoside. This is again the very important hypothesis. This is the structures of nucleoside antibiotics. All are the one position modified physiologic nucleoside and are highly antimicrobial and anti-tumor active, but highly toxic too. Therefore, these antibiotics could not be clinically used due to their toxicity. In 1960s, 1970s, many chemists modified these one position modified nucleoside, expecting to obtain the modified nucleoside having better biological activity. However, modification of these one position modified nucleoside resulted a loss of activity. The same results were obtained with synthetic nucleoside. One position modified nucleosides are highly active but highly toxic too. And the modification of the highly active one position modified nucleosides results in a loss of activity. Therefore, at that time, many chemists said there will be no future in nucleoside chemistry and left nucleoside chemistry, said goodbye to nucleoside chemistry. However, I thought that loss of activity means the loss of toxicity. Therefore, if this one position modified for pharmacy substitute to produce nucleoside is toxic, additional modification could decrease the toxicity of this nucleoside. The third hypothesis the substrate selectivity different between HIV reversal states RT and human DNA polymerase. Sanger method says that dihydrox nucleoside are the chain terminator of human DNA polymerase. And therefore, these critical dihydrox nucleoside drugs are the chain terminator of DNA polymerase. Therefore, these nucleoside are highly toxic. However, they have been and being clinically used by using a limiting amount of them. These facts indicate that the activity of these drugs to RT and to DNA polymerase is different because RT accepts these drugs very efficiently, more easy than DNA polymerase do. Thus, the subset selectivity between RT and human DNA polymerase is different. different. Therefore, we have a chance to develop very excellent modified nucleoside that are much more easily accepted by RT and much less accepted by DNA polymerases than these clinical drugs. So we have a chance to develop much excellent anti-HIV modified nucleoside than these clinical drugs. Number four hypothesis, the way to make nucleoside drug long acting. Introduction of a substituent at four prime position of physiologic nucleoside provide a nucleoside with stability to both enzymatic and acidic cleavage of glycosid bond and make them long acting. Cleavage of this bond not only reduces the biological activity of this nucleoside, but also sometimes the liberated base causes new toxicity. You may know the solubidin affair. Solubidin, uh, developed by Yamasa Corporation, is a very excellent anti herpes drug. However, this glycosid bond is very easily cleaved in body to liberate this base. This base inhibits the enzyme, which then compose the toxic fiber view to non-toxic compound. 15 Japanese cancer patients who were treated with 5-FU died by taking solubidin to cure herpes zoster due to the toxicity of accumulated, accumulated 5-FU. Therefore, nucleoside drugs should have stable 
グラクシルボーンフォーグラクシルクリービッジディパーティペーションディスロンピアトゥフォームコープラナオクソカーベニウムアイオンイズベリーインポータンインダケースオフォープラシサブティティトゥプライデオクノコサイステリクリパルジョンビティンディサブスティンティチェンディディコンフォーメーションオプラノスリンイントゥステーブルノーダンタイプコンフォーメーション With this conformation, it will be difficult for this lone pair to participate and form coplanar oxocarbonium ion. This is very difficult to be coplanar. Therefore, participation is difficult. Therefore, this bond is stable. Therefore, this nucleoside will, have, will be stable in body. Therefore, it will be, will be long acting. For glycolysis participation, okay. Oh, sorry. On the basis of these four hypotheses, I have started a synthesis and biological evaluation of 4.6 sub T2.5 nucleoside at the joint research with Asahi breweries. And at that time, the anti HIV activity evaluation of my compound was performed by. Dr. Masanori Baba of Fukushima, Fukushima Medical University. However, Asahi Bureaucracy quitted their pharmaceutical business in several years, and therefore our collaboration was ended. So next, I asked Yamasa Corporation for the collaboration. Then Yamasa asked Dr. Hiroki Mitsuya of Kumamoto University and the NIH for the anti-HIV activity evaluation of my nucleoside. Thus, this collaboration among the three groups has started. At first, I have synthesized 4 plus C, methyl DD, and D4, and 2 plus nucleoside, and found that among these nucleosides, cytidine and C, having three prime hydroxy group, showed high anti-HIV activity and toxicity too. Thus, we found that three prime hydroxy group is very important for biological activity. Further, we showed that these nucleosides are the chain terminator of reverse uh, DNA polymerase alpha and beta and reverse transportase. Thus, first hypothesis was proved by these studies. Next, we have synthetic barriers for C substituted D rival and DD and D4 and two prideos nucleoside and found that D rival didn't show biological activity at all because the, this primary alcohol, neopentyl type primary alcohol, cannot be phosphorylated by kinase. And DD and D4 didn't show high anti HIV activity. Again, these hydrogen groups were difficult to be phosphorylated by kinase. Without this substitute, these are clinical drugs. But we are very happy and lucky to find that 2 plus nucleoside, substitute, 2 plus nucleoside showed high anti HIV activity and toxicity too. So we found that. Three prime hydroxy group plays a very important role for the kinase, kinase phosphorylation at five prime hydroxy group. Further, we found among these substituents, ethylene is the best. Further, we found that purine derivatives are superior to pyrimidine. This is the anti activity of four plasy. Ethanol, 2 prideoxy pyrimidine and purines. Among pyrimidines, again, cytidine and alacy showed high anti HIV activity and toxicity too. 5-fluorocytin, additionally modified nucleoside, 1 2 position, dramatically degraded the toxicity of the parent nucleoside as was expected. However, Yamasa's uh, biologist told me that nucleoside, this nucleoside showed some toxicity to 
some cells. So we, we have stopped working on this nucleoside. Among purine derivatives, adenine and guanine and two amino adenine showed high anti-GIB activity and gave us fairly acceptable selectivity indices. Inosine, which is not the component of DNA, didn't show high anti-GIB activity, but this is not toxic nucleoside. This is anti-HIV activity of hopefully ethylene purine derivatives against wild type and recent HIV mutant. This is wild type HIV. Uh, uh, these are recent HIVs. As you can see, all critical drugs have recent HIV mutant, but all these purine derivatives are highly active against all resistant HIV mutants, as if they can prevent the emergence of resistant HIV mutants. However, guanine derivatives showed activity to HERA cell, cancer cell, so guanine derivative would be very toxic nucleoside. So next we perform the mouse toxicity examination of purine derivatives. As was anticipated, guanine derivatives was very toxic by both oral and intravenous admiration. All mice died almost spontaneously. Two amino adenine was also toxic, but adenine and inosine didn't show toxicity up to 100 mg per kilogram. Therefore, adding derivative seemed very promising. And I couldn't understand why these two position modified nucleoside show toxicity, and why this one position modified nucleoside didn't show toxicity. However, while I, we are working on this subject, it was found that these adding derivatives were very easy they aminated by adenosine deaminating mice. These to the deaminated and converted to toxic guanine derivative. This is to the non-toxic, no, not so active inosine derivative. Thus, adenosine deaminase is a serious problem in our, in our study. However, it has been well known by Montgomery since 1969, that the introduction of a halogen atom at the two position of adenine base makes the nucleoside stable to adenosine deaminase. So I synthesized two flow derivatives of adenine derivative, namely EFDA. EFDA is two positions modified nucleoside, uh, therefore expected to be not so toxic. This is the stability of EFDA to adenosine deaminase without fluorine atom here, deaminated very easy, but EFDA is completely stable under the same condition as expected. This is stability of EFDA and the acidic conditions of gastric due. All clinical dietary nucleoside drugs were spontaneously decomposed. But EFDA is very stable. After two hours, only 3% was decomposed. And the EFDA is also stable to phosphorylase. So it's now time to ask biological evaluation of EFDA to Dr. Hiroaki Mitsuya. However, while we are working on, on this subject, Two papers claiming that the three prime hydro group of hopelessly substitute two paradox nucleoses is a cause of toxicity. Therefore, four plus substitute two paradox nucleoses will be no good for clinical use. One paper is by this group, a professor Tanaka of Shoa University, and uh, uh, Professor Baba. He was previous my collaborator. Their claim is based on their experimental work. They synthesized 
uh, thinyl D40, D40 is a clinical drug, and found that uh, thinyl D40 is more active than less toxic than the clinical drug. So EFD is very excellent anti-HIV nucleoside. They claim these nucleosides are not so toxic because these doesn't, do not have 3 prime hydroxyl, but 4 plus substitute, all 4 plus substitute 2 prime nucleoside reported anti-hypocrisy were all highly toxic because 3 prime hydroxyl is the cause of toxicity. Therefore, 4 plus C substitute 2 prime nucleoside will be no good for clinical use. And one year later, Dr. Mitsuya's group reported claim, uh, the paper claiming almost the same thing. Dr. Mitsuya at that time was my collaborator. He used to tell me that your compound is highly toxic because 3 prime hydroxy is a cause of toxicity. Therefore, you know the 4 prime substitute 2 prime nucleoside will be no good for clinical use. We reported with Dr. Mitsuya that this diode nucleoside was not active because this hydroxyl cannot be hospitalized by kinase. But this nucleoside having three prime hydroxyl is highly anti-HIV active but, and highly toxic. But additional modification could degree, degree the toxicity of this nucleoside. Their claim uh, Dr. Michia uh, used to say that this is no good. And eventually, he published a paper with uh, Dr. Marquet of NIH. He's a very excellent nucleoside chemist. And together with Dr. Salapino, Professor Salapinos of Missouri University, their claim is based on their experimental result. They chemically synthesized the uh, not reactive this nucleoside, triphosphate, and showed that this triphosphate is more active than the AGT triphosphate. The AGT is, um, was the most active one against the uh, RT or wild type HIV. And this is not so toxic. Therefore, the three prime hydroxy, they claim that. 3 prime has group plays a very important role for the kinase phosphorylation of this hydroxyl. But the cause of toxicity, therefore, 4 plus substitute 2 prime nucleoside will be no good for clinical use. Since these two papers are uh, reported by very famous and very excellent nucleoside chemists and biologists, all people working on this field have come to recognize that 4 plus substitute 2 product nucleoside will be no good for clinical use. However, in my study, 3 prime hydroxyl group is essential to prevent the emergence of recent HIV mutant and EFDA is two position, two position modified nucleoside. Therefore, expected to be not so toxic. Therefore, I asked Dr. Mitsuya the biological evaluation of EFDA together, together with its two crore derivative and these derivatives without 3 prime hydroxyl DD and D4 derivative without 3 prime hydroxyl and found that these nucleosides without 3 prime hydroxyl together with D clinical D40 and the D40 showed fairly good high anti-HIV activity. But uh, the activity dramatically decreased against less anti-HIV mutant. I thought that this, these results showed that a nucleoside with a, with a 3 prime hydroxyl group will have less anti-HIV mutant. On the contrary, these nucleosides having 3 prime hydroxyl group especially if they showed extremely high anti-HIV activity. The activity is several orders of magnitude more active than the clinical drugs. And if they still 
highly active against resistant H A mutant and gave us very acceptable selectivity indices. They are more than 100,000. These results showed that the nucleoside having three prime hydrogen group could be not toxic. With respect to the resistant H A mutant, since then, Dr. Michia's group has been working on the generation of the recent HIV mutants against EFDA. However, recent HIV mutant against EFDA has not been, has not emerged over 20 years. But the recent HIV mutant against ethanol D40 ethanol emerged very easy. These results show that the three prime hydrogen group is very important to prevent the emergence of recent HAB mutant. This is the toxicity and stability of EFDA and its triphosphate. EFDA didn't show acute toxicity up to 100 mg per kilogram, and EFDA didn't show toxicity to macacus, macacus for more than six months. EFDA triphosphate, this is a real active species of EFDA was turned out to be not the substrate of DNA polymerase alpha and DNA polymerase beta, and especially not to the substrate of mitochondria DNA polymerase gamma. Thus, EFDA does not show toxicity as a nucleoside. Half-life for EFDA triphosphate in body is about 100 hours. That of AGT triphosphate less than three, prime, uh, three hours. That EFDA it will be very long acting. This is rationalization of the inhibition of RT and DNA polymerase by 4 plus substitute 2 plus deoxy nucleoside. These one position modified nucleosides are highly anti HIV active and highly toxic too. These results show that both RT and human DNA polymerase accepted these one position modified nucleoside. However, these two position modified nucleoside, especially EVDA, is highly anti-HIV active, but not toxic. This just showed that RT accepted EVDA very efficiently, but DNA polymerase didn't accept EVDA. Thus, the substrate selectivity is different between RT and DNA polymerase. Papyrus. The fact that ethanol D40 is more active than the critical D40 and the amazing result that ethanol D40, uh, EFDA, I'm sorry, EFDA triphosphate is two times better substrate for RT than the physiologic substrate to produce adenosine triphosphate. These results indicate that the 4 ethanol group will uh, have special affinity to RT. And the evidence that ethanol group has special affinity to RT was first confirmed by these groups using eth ethanol D40 and X-ray crystallographic technique. They showed that four ethanol group fits into a hydrophobic pocket defined by RT residual A minus. And one year later, the same evidence was obtained with EFDA by Missouri University Group. They named EFDA translocation defective reverse transportation inhibitor because the affinity of EFDA by both 4 ethanol and 3 prime hydrogen groups to RT is so strong that the 3 prime EFDA monophosphate terminated primer strand on the RT does not translocate from the pre-translocation site to the post-translocation site to accept the next deoxynucleoside triphosphate. And therefore, the next deoxynucleoside triphosphate can't react with the 
3.3-EFDA monophosphate terminate. Thus, EFDA is extremely high anti-HIV active. And this is an extraordinary big luck for us because no one could predict it. Synthesis has made it. As Louis Pasteur said, chance favors the prepared mind. In this case, I may say, chance favored us. That the validity of my four hypotheses is verified, and we have this developed, developed EFDA, which prevents the emergence of resistant HA mutants and over 400 times more active than AZT, and several orders of magnitude more active than the other critical drugs, and very low toxic, and stable in plasma, maybe so uh, very long acting. EUD is now under critical test by Mark as MK8591. And the results have been reported at CROI or and IAS. Last year at IAS in Mexico, uh, Merck named EUDA is Latrabiol. We can see the result online. According to the result, EUDA is smoothly absorbed in by body by oral admiration and converted to its triphosphate. And triphosphate is very stable in body. By only 10 mg admiration, the activity continues more than 10 days. And the EVDA is well, was well tolerated in healthy adult subjects, subject, up to 400 mg. This is a comparison of the activity of EVDA with clinical drugs. Red line is TDF every day, 300 milligram oral administration. HIV degrees, but after about 10 days, recent HIV mutant emerge. Blue line is TAF every day, 25 milligram oral administration. HIV degrees, but after about 15 days, recent HIV mutant emerge. Block line is only one time, not every day, only one time administration or administration, 10 milligram EFDA, HIV degrees, over 10 days, according to the result by Dr. Michia's group, recent HIV mutant will not emerge for more than over 20 years. The minimum doses of EFDA was reported. Weekly, 0.5 gram is okay. That means 26 milligram per year. UDA was reported very useful for prophylaxis at weekly doses of less than 250 microgram can prevent the infection. Side effects was also side effects were also reported in the phase two study of combination with doba b ring. About eight percent patient claimed uh, side effect, but none of these side effects were serious, and the most common side effect was headache, because isotrabiol is still being studied. Information on possible side effect of the drug is not complete. As testing is, is a trivial, continues. Additional information on possible side effect will be gathered. This is a different administration method by subdermal implant, implant. Like this, very small amount of uh, implanting. Only once a year, implanting works for uh, both treatment and prophylaxis. 
this year uh, by CROI meeting, pre, uh, pre exposure prophylaxis was reported, EFD is reported to be used for pre uh, PEP. PEP. So EFD is now very promising nucleoside. This work has been carried out by the collaboration of many scientists. So I'd like to acknowledge to all these scientists, especially to Dr. Hiroki Mitsuya for the biological evaluation of my compound and for very useful discussion. I hope if they could contribute to the awareness of human beings. And I hope, I wish, I wish you good health and good fortune. Thank you for your attention.